That's a pretty good ovation for a politician in California. Well, just, uh, just ask Gray Davis. <laughs> I don't ask him much. Well. Uh, okay. Um, well, you are an expert on foreign relations. You spent a lot of time in the Senate dealing with that. News not getting really any better out of Iraq. And I know that you have said before that uh, the president needs to level with us about Iraq. So apparently you think, as many people do, that he has not been leveling with us. I, I feel like I've seen this movie before in my life where a situation is getting worse and the president just thinks, well, if I keep lying, somehow they won't notice, but they always do. Why do presidents do that? Why won't he lo level with us? Well, I don't think he's lying, but I do think he's not leveling. Let me explain what I mean by that. That is quite a distinction. No, no. <laughs> Boy, that's a fine line there, Senator. Uh, well, I'm in California. <laughs> What I mean by that is that I think the president is, doesn't trust and his advisors don't trust the American people enough to tell them exactly what we're in for. Senator Luger, a conservative Republican, and I held hearings on this, this subject back last July, a year ago July. And it was clear from every expert it's going to cost us billions of dollars. Right. We're going to be there for years and it was going to take tens of thousands of troops. But these neocons came along and convinced the president, I think, that no, that's not the way. They, they, there's a set of assumptions that have all turned out not to be accurate, and it's very hard for them to say, no, we were wrong. Uh, that's a problem with this president. He doesn't seem to be able to say he's wrong. Well, that's a problem with everybody, I think. But especially this president. <laughs> I know you're trying, but, trying but that's not your party. You that's can trash him. Uh, <laughs> but uh, truly, I mean, this week he said, instead of just saying to other countries, look, you know what? We need your help, and I'm asking. Yeah. He said, I challenge other countries. I, I went on, I was on the air immediately after that and on several stations and, uh, and networks, and uh, I, I made the same point. Uh, Look, I met immediately after we went in and toppled Saddam with the Director General of NATO, the, uh, the, the head of the EU. I met them in Europe. They both, I said, what's it going to take? They said, all you got to do is ask. Ask for help. Can imagine if the president said after toppling Saddam, look, we had real disagreements with some of our friends. I respect the fact they're democracies. Right. They, in fact, thought we were wrong. But now that's gone. That's over. Everybody's interest is at stake here. And we're asking for help. I think it would have changed yeah. the entire environment. I do too. Um, speaking of environments that need to be changed, I know that the talk started in Korea this week, or with Korea, North Korea, rather. Um, they are saying that they already have a bomb. Uh, Iran looks like they're on the way to having one. Um, I don't understand our position on this, and maybe you can help me about it. Uh, how we are dealing with it. No, well, because uh, it looks to me like we can't stop every country that wants to get a bomb from having one. It looks like the genie is out of the bottle. And I don't understand why this country just doesn't say to these countries, as President Bush did after 9-11, when he said, look, it's not just the terrorists we're after, any country that harbors terrorists. So he was putting the world on notice that we're not just going after the trigger man. We're going after that second level. Why don't we say to countries, why don't we declare, look, if a nuclear bomb goes off in this country, we will trace it back to its origin, or origin and we will consider you that... Oregon on your mind. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> we will trace it back to Oregon, and boy... Uh, and we will hold that country responsible. Why don't we make that doctrine? Well, that, that is our doctrine. It's just not being enunciated. The reason we're not enunciating this right now is that the red line in Korea is one that requires the rest of the world to be with us. And we've pretty well alienated a lot of the rest of the world. And uh, yeah. no, I'm not being facetious. Yeah, no. I mean, and so it makes it hard for us to threaten North Korea when South Korea says we won't be in the deal with you. Right. When Japan says we won't be in the deal with you. K Japan, South Korea uh, have been pushing us to talk with the uh, North Koreans for the last year and a half. A number of us have been pushing the president. But again, there is this notion that um, somehow, if we just demonstrate we're not going to talk, we're going to be tough, that somehow everything's going to fall in line here. And I, 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 if you notice, there is no red line they've drawn here. They've drawn a red line in Libya, a red line in, 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 in right. Iraq, a red line, but yeah. not in Iran and not in North Korea, because that's, uh, that means tens of thousands of lives lost if we have to go to right. war. Uh, I saw you uh, on TV with, uh, on the Hill grilling Wolfowitz. 
And I have to say, you were good. I, I mean, you were tough on him. I mean, you got mad. I like a politician who gets mad. I well, wish... look, what, what makes me angry is all these folks out here, they're probably... Half of them believe we shouldn't have gone into Iraq in the first place. Half of them, no, 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 I just said no. And, and, and half of the people listening don't know why we're not doing better in Iraq. And what's going to happen here is if we lose the peace in Iraq, you're going to see a couple things happen. You're going to see Iran increase its control. You're going to see the radicalization of the region. You're going to see probably two Arab countries fall, probably Jordan and Saudi Arabia. You're going to see a mess that you like you've never seen and our kids are going to inherit. And so what angers me is we're not leveling with you, the American people. I believe if we went to the people and said, hey, look, this is going to cost us billions of bucks, but this is why it's important. This is why we must prevail and lay it out and then say this is what it's going to cost. But guess what? They don't have a single penny in next year's budget. Zero for the cost of Iraq. Right. And we're paying four right. billion bucks a month now. It's off and it off. angers me. No, well, you know why they're not doing it, I think. I think they're not doing it, Bill, because they have to acknowledge the costs which are going to exceed a hundred billion dollars. You're gonna have Babe Buchanan and others on here later will tell you something different, but they know better. They know it's gonna cost us a hundred billion dollars or more. But if you tell us that now, guess what? The deficit then registers at five hundred and eighty right. billion dollars. Right. And how do you explain the tax cut then? And how do you explain all these other things then? So what we're going to do is get piecemeal. Right. Five billion here, three billion here, seven billion here. And that does anger me. But if I can get back to Wolfowitz. <laughs> when I saw you go after Wolfowitz, I said to myself, well, there's a Democrat with balls. Why didn't he run? We, we have a lot of good people run, and I didn't run for a couple reasons. One, I made a decision this time last year that I had a better shot of influencing the direction of this administration by jumping in on the side of Powell and the uniformed military to try to get the president to move in the direction I thought he should move. Had I announced for president a year ago, I would have not had the opportunity to even attempt to do that. It would, everything would have been... But aren't there too many nine? It's like some reality show where no one gets voted off. <laughs> Well, that's all the more reason why I shouldn't have made 10, probably. Yeah. But, uh, but it's one of those things where for me to be able to win the nomination, I'd have to sort of parachute into this thing. Everything would have to work exactly right. And uh, besides, uh, my wife uh, said she'd uh, move in another bedroom if I did it. So I... Uh, ah, the Colin Powell the excuse. Colin Powell excuse. My wife yeah. won't let me. My Damn. wife won't let me. And, and I dog. said you had balls. That's right. <laughs> You're a good man. Thank you, Roger. Just keep giving him hell up there, Senator. Appreciate it. All right. That was Joe Biden. Now, please help me introduce our panel for this evening.